<laughs> yes, thank you for joining us. And, and again, uh, from the crew here at the Museum of Graffiti, we welcome you and thank you for taking the time to spend the hour with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so as we, before we start, I usually read off a little bit uh, about the, the guest. So I will uh, flip my screen as I often do um, <laughs> and read, uh, uh, read a bit about you. Uh, one afternoon when Mimi was 17 at the Truckee, California State Park, where she skateboarded with mostly boys, Mimi watched a freight train pass by that was trans and was transformed by the vivid spray painted letters. Her sense of social justice already ran deep and she recognized that this graffiti was a beautiful act of defiance. Mimi quickly developed a signature graph style that wove her sense of local culture she also discovered another talent, floral design. Her work with plants grew into a profession where she could enhance weddings, photo shoots, and events. Murals, skateboarding, and flowers are the trifecta of her creative life. She is the first woman graffiti artist to get sponsored by Monster Energy. She's surrounded by men in the skate and art culture, and she gra gravitated toward other women artists of all kinds. Mimi's high energy style of magnetizing people together produced an all female mural in industrial West Oakland. She noticed that all the ladies there supported each other rather than competing. And, and the success of that public art inspired her to form Few and Far. This all woman street art and skateboard crew is a 20 member international organization that has completed over a hundred art commissions and projects in the US and abroad. Wow, what an accomplishment. <laughs> wow. So so Mimi, let's 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 have a little throwback with you. But before we do that, how are you? How are you coping uh uh where you are now in Richmond with um the two things at the forefront of our minds, which are the coronavirus and uh the Black Lives Matter uh civil rights movement um well i've spent i've been spending a lot of time um protesting and working with other groups on making sure that protesters are protected and safe um i have now taken a few days to actually work on my own life and kind of stay maintaining to like my career and making money but um richmond is where the confederacy started <clears throat> in the south and it's where slavery had started so here for us it's like a huge huge momentum of people working together that are just sick of seeing you know people of color blacks african americans being held down by the system and just other things that happen in our communities like housing health care and other issues like that so before I moved here, there was so many people doing great work here. And I am by no means any any comparison to what people are doing here um, for the movement. I'm just the small little crumb and I'm just, I feel like I just need to use my platform to speak on what I believe matters for our community and especially living in black neighborhoods, what I can contribute to, um, you know, just our community in general so and gi given the potency of the history and the legacy that's there in richmond um how how's how are things on the ground are you, are you finding the protest to be peaceful is there ongoing police brutality like we see in new york city and other cities so i might not be the best one to speak on this because i i am native and white but my skin is light skin so I don't feel that I'm best to speak on what black people are experiencing, but from my own opinion, I feel that this movement is powerful. And honestly, when they say peaceful protest, I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Cause it's, you know, people are doing what they need to do to get their voices heard. So whatever that entails, whatever people of color need, that's up to them and I support them and what they need. Are you are you utilizing your creativity as well, or are you just doing more of the uh, 
the groundwork? Are you in terms of your your your, your engagement? Are you painting murals or signs, or is it just organizing and, and support? So I haven't felt very ambitious to paint my own name. I uh, in between protesting and just trying to help any protesters in general, driving people around, whatever I needed to do on the grounds. Um, I did paint a no justice, no peace wall. Um, it took me like six days because I couldn't focus on art because I was so upset about um, when people were protesting. Like one day there was a bunch of um, youth, women and children that were protesting and the police just gassed everybody. So, um, you know, experiencing that makes you not, I don't even want to focus on myself at this point and I don't have any energy to. It, it's interesting that as a young Mimi, you, you, you saw graffiti on a freight train and you, you, you saw it as a political statement. Tell me about your, 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 your first encounters with graffiti and your attraction to it and then involvement in it. So I grew up in a really small town that is uh, in the woods in Northern California and there was no graffiti. You would kind of see like anarchy or like you would see shitty swastikas or, you know, some shit that wasn't needed. Excuse my language. Um, so I never really saw graffiti and it never really stuck out to me. But um, when I did see a train uh, skating at a park, I knew from coming from an abusive home and a really, I grew up really, really poor. And that type of that type of experience and environment really breeds like either a strong or a weak person. So I think that growing up in this harsh environment really created me to be this strong individual that I then turned into a rebel even before I started graffiti. And I think that that just set the tone of who I was from the beginning from my upbringing. So once I saw graffiti on a train, it was done. I was like, wow, my mind was blown. I knew that someone had done that illegally and I wanted to know more. And I was like, why is that? Who did that? And I thought to myself, I would never be able to do that. And then I, once I started going into the cities and stuff, I noticed the graffiti was everywhere. And I, it, it just like, it blended into my soul. And and because you were into skateboarding, is is that did that segue into the graffiti culture? Uh, I think I think so. I um, I was always a creative person, so I think skateboarding just drew me into that creativity. And so, in the early days, who were the, who was influencing you? Who was mentoring you? Um, I actually hung out with some. So I had different times of different living in different cities. I've lived in six different cities. Um, the first person I had painted a train with was Cops 640. And they're from Oakland. They're an Oakland crew and also Logo 640. Um, and I, I was really heavily influenced by this girl that writes F word in Oakland and uh, Jerk uh, CBS. All of these women were like such big influences for me. And I actually was just pretty much doing it on my own. Like I was painting just on my own accord. It was something I did with myself. Uh, it was a way that I got through some of my life issues. And, and aside from dealing with the, the, the you know, um, I guess acting out those life issues. I mean, obviously creativity and art making was important to you. And, and in terms of finding aesthetic and style, lettering style, uh, we, we all look towards something and someone for that, right? Um, wh where were you finding that? Mostly on the, on, the, on the freights or on the walls or in your community? It just depends because there's sometimes um, certain people would come into my life that would fucking burn me, um, that I really learned a lot from. Uh, I learned a lot from Rhyme MSK. Um, there's just different people at different points in my life were influences on me. So, Mimi, the the, the trains, the the again, 
being a young woman running in this environment, uh, it's not a very safe environment. And, and there's a lot of high risk involved in all this, especially because one, again, you're in a very dangerous environment with the trains and, and, and the tracks, but also amongst other men. How, how did you negotiate that in terms of um, your sense of safety um, and also dealing with bias from the boys? For one, I always carry a taser or a knife. Um, I've also, uh, because I grew up abused, I've always been a fighter. Being a skateboarder has made me really tough. Um, I've just always known, like, if you fuck with me, I'm going to take your eyes or throat out. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so I, I knew what I could bring to the table. And also, I made sure to learn everything that any writer had to contribute to me. I made sure to like really take that in. And if somebody gave me advice, I would internalize that and, and then forward that. Since I've always been kind of a loner or person that liked to do things on my own, um, once I learned the rails, which my friend Tone got me into, uh, she kind of showed me the uh, places in Sacramento where to paint. And then, um, you know, my friend Pierre had showed me this good yard where I then could paint whenever I needed or things like that. But I've always dressed super masculine because I don't want to be targeted as a female um, while bombing or painting trains. And I always roll up on dudes before they roll up on me. So I, I don't look like this cute when I'm painting trains. So if I see a dude, I'll fucking roll up on him and be like, who the fuck are you? I mean, in a nice way, but I'm definitely like- <laughs> Now, do you, go, do you go on missions alone or do you have somebody time. with you? All the time. Really? And I, so carry, a I carry a ladder and yep. That's, that, that's pretty ballsy of you. I mean, I, like I said, from my background, it's kind of made me, it, it set up a recipe for disaster in a way, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's made me who I am. I'm, I, it's not that I feel like I could take on anybody or anything like that. I just, I feel strong in who I am and my desires and what I want to achieve. And, and why do you feel your name needs to be placed everywhere? Why, why do, what, what's that need? What's that sense of entitlement you have on public space? I don't know if it's exactly about my name. Um, yes, that was my, uh, my grandmother named me that. And um, she was like an old country woman that drove a, a semi truck. Like she was a badass woman and she was strong. And she taught me that we don't need men necessarily we choose men but we don't need a man to take care of us or do anything like we can handle our own so by that it's not really about my name i actually get the high from painting either with a friend or alone or if i obsess over a spot when i actually get that spot it it feels it feels amazing you know what i mean Oh, absolutely. Uh, and and I, it's interesting, uh, certain people do, I mean, everyone has their reasoning for, for, for painting graffiti. And to me, it's, it's very interesting about this, the very thing that you said, that the gratification of... It's more the adventure, for sure. And the adventure, no, you're right. You're right. And so when you think about this as a young girl, are you thinking and beyond graffiti are you thinking yeah perhaps i'll develop as an artist or perhaps i am an artist i didn't accept i was an artist till two years ago and i've been painting 21 years explain that to me um i deal with imposter syndrome so mm -hmm. i've always felt like uh i wasn't good enough or i've had so many people my entire career tell me that I need to stop. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to be in this crew. I'm not. So uh, I think this entire time has been me proving to myself 
that I am good enough and that I can fucking do this. And also painting alone makes me feel such like an accomplishment as a woman and as a smaller woman and you know what I mean? And, and doing my thing and like, wow, I climbed up the side of that building by myself. Like <laughs> that feels really good. Or like, wow, I painted that whole car on my own and it took me five or seven hours. You know what I mean? So there's, there's this like gratitude and how I feel about myself that. But, what, but weren't back. you getting, I, it, it's strange to me for painting so long and I'm sure you had so many kudos from your peers and your friends about your artistic talents that, that it would take so long. Um, I've had a lot of people say, why am I not better? You know, like, oh, you've been painting so long, you should be better. And I feel that own pressure on myself. Um, I feel like I have a lot of work to do and a lot to learn. Um, I'm definitely very, very hard on myself. My self doubt is like crippling. Right. But, but, but you, yet you still find this courage to act out and to, to continue painting and to keep exploring. I mean, there's a lot of diversity in your, in your painting your, and your letter forms and the way you color, the, color your name and the backgrounds. Um, uh, it 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 kind of surprises me that uh, you would feel this way, uh, but Aww. I understand. But but I understand Aww. it because I think all us all, all of us artists suffer some kind of insecurity, um, and particularly in such a large field, right? Who would have thought graffiti would be as big as it is? Uh, Not me. Right. I don't even. I, it's weird. I know that I have this many followers, but it's weird for me to like somebody recognize me at the skate park the other day, and I'm like, holy shit, like. You know, it's always weird when people know who you are and know about you, you know, it's like, wow, like I'm this girl from a small town, you know what I mean? So. Right. Yeah. So, so let me ask you something because, you know, we are a museum of history and graffiti and we start in New York and, um, and in the seventies and sixties, how, how, how do you connect to that story at all, that history uh, at, at all about New York graffiti and hip hop and all that? So when I was um, when I was 18, I had to see Five Points because I had heard I seen it in a magazine and stuff. And I knew that this was New York was the hub of graffiti. And this was so important for me to know this history and like who these women were before me. And I saw this video that Claw Money was in and I just I fell in love with this idea that they had a girl crew PMS and I ended up learning about other crews, but yeah, I went to five points and mirrors gave me a spot to paint and I had the shittiest paint. All these dudes were talking shit to me. I was so bad and he even let me like paint and I felt really embarrassed, but I got to see like graffiti in New York and it was really special to me and I really dove deep into that. And that's when I learned about you and, you know, many other artists. And so now, now that you're this global artist, right? And now you're, you're, you're obviously cementing yourself into the history and, 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 and various ways. Um, you've chosen another role for yourself as, as a community person, an, an activist, a teacher, uh, somebody who really cares about playing it forward. Uh, tell me about this this role that you have, that you've given yourself. So I haven't really given myself anything. Like, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to set out and, like, help the kids. Like, it wasn't like that. It's like, I am a very bubbly, like, child at heart person. So I feel that I... I think from where I came from, I wanted to help children not get fucked up and not get lost in the way that I could have been lost. If I didn't find skateboarding and I didn't find art, I would have been on the deep end of life in general. Like, so I felt like I wanted to try to like guide children that were poor like me or from abusive homes like me or things like that, that I could maybe pull them out of whatever they felt like they were in. You know what I'm saying? So um, 
the ki the kids are just I just love I I love them. I actually haven't hugged a kid in a while and like I just love being around them honestly. So it's not anything I've set out to do. I just want to see uh people succeed and children know that they're loved and they can make it. Uh, the slide that we're looking at uh when I put it together I it was such a beautiful vision for me about you in playing it forward with kids but also with adults right that potentially this little child could become a member of few and far perhaps in 10 years oh my god i'm gonna cry <laughs> right yeah so that that playing it forward is 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 wonderful it is at the heart of of what you do not just for a select few not just for the old and for the young and and it makes sense that you would again organize uh women in your life but it's not just about painting you also teach people how to skate and we were talking about this earlier about skateboarding in your community let's talk about that and um how important that is to you so there's this amazing organization that is called rasa and i know that's a i forgot their pro uh their whole thing but it's richmond virginia skate anyways they're amazing people and um there's also this guy pat larley or pat, oh god pat don't kill my don't kill me for messing up your last name anyways he created a really good uh skate park here and he has started a lot of lowry pat lowry anyways he had done a lot for the community here um there is a lot of skaters that are working on a skate park here where they spend hours and time and money and they also uh volunteer oh someone had tagged it my friend nate rasa project um so they actually work with inner city kids and they teach skateboarding and it really builds self-esteem it just it's an all-around awesome thing so the skate community here is amazing like there's a lot of great things happening here in richmond Again, you know, more images of you playing it forward uh, for young women. Um, it, it, it's interesting that you're, you, you're, you're not, again, few and far, again, it's, it's, it's a concept around women, but I think it, it's a concept that as a male, I find very inspiring. Aww. Uh, because uh, being that this is such a male centric well, the art world is male centric. There is something so disturbing about that, right? You're telling me. Yeah, and <laughs> and one of the things in the last ten years, maybe maybe a bit longer, actually a lot longer. You know, women have always been playing a part in in graffiti, but in in you know very specifically in, in terms of style writing, that is something that is start as as has been evolving and matured and fully realized as good as any male has ever painted it um and it's and it's a great thing to see that we are there already and and of course and of course we've been highlighting these artists like yourself and others here at the museum of graffiti program and we appreciate that it means um, a lot and and getting beyond that too you are p practicing abstraction you know, you 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 shared two photos of your studio work, uh, but I'm I'm hopeful that you you continue that. Uh, tell me tell me about this part of your your world. How often do you paint canvases? Are you interested in showing in galleries? So, um, I <laughs> I prefer just painting illegally outside, but I have. Um, I think that my, I'm a very spiritual person. So a lot of that reflects my energy, my aura, everything I'm working out um, in canvas work. So I don't really have a studio. I work at, through out of my house and like on my back porch and try to like spray paint in all types of weather. Um, I would like to have a place where I could create properly inside. That would be ideal, but um yeah, this this work is just me expressing another side of me. I would like to be in galleries. Um, I think I was always against it for so long, but I think at this point, uh, I'm definitely 
why were you resistant? Because I, I think being a bomber, it's always like, do that street shit till the day you die. You know what I mean? So like, being in galleries or like, doing stuff that isn't on that level is kind of like, I didn't want to sell out or like, be soft. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I think and then I, I didn't accept that I was an artist till like two years ago. So so now the, the, the change of heart, you're, you're realizing that you, you can also empower yourself in that space in the same way. Right. And make money from it. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not really making money from it. But yeah, but you can. Yeah, that would be the that would be the goal. <laughs> but you know what? You know, you're you're hardcore. You you are hardcore. We see that in your painting and like this mural you did with Deity. Uh, fuck around and find out. Uh, and in so, Barcelona. In Barcelona with uh, the letters in silver and black and this this woman with a beautiful mane of hair but with a revolver. And yeah, Dee Dee painted that. <laughs> So in terms of messages like this, is this is this kind of just, okay, asserting yourself? You're asserting yourself amongst the boys or society? Uh, I try not to like separate myself from men that often. I try not to like, oh, I'm a woman, like this is how it's gotta be. Like, because that's how it's always been is I've noticed like a difference even today at the skate park. I was the only girl skateboarding, you know what I mean? Like you it's not that i'm trying to assert myself i guess it's how i felt we felt at the time where we're like we paint pretty stuff all the time and we paint feminine stuff but like we also have this other side of us where it's like step and you'll find out you know what i mean it's kind of like it's it's kind of like on the deep level too of like we're we're here forever fuck around and find out <laughs> <laughs> So, so this slide, uh, this one was interesting to me. Uh, and, and I talked to you about the duality, right, of the personality. Uh, you on the ladder, the muralist, the, the, the organizer, uh, and then kind of the, the street bomber, you know, managing, managing these two sides of your personality right now. Uh, and maybe more sides, of course, because you're out there, you know, doing some... Uh, some protest work as well but where's your comfort zone i don't think i ever have one um i told you that i deal with like imposter syndrome so i'm constantly searching to find where i'm comfortable um i think that i'm just doing what feels good so um as long as I don't think too much or overanalyze or deal with people's also people's stuff that they project towards me. I believe that I'm on the right path. I just have to stay focused with my heart and what my destination is. So. Right. And you're charting that again through, through all the organizational work that you do and community work. Um, Mimi, I wanted to touch base on something about the name. Uh, we, 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 earlier on, how we communicated, there was a miscommunication because there was another writer uh, with the same name. You mentioned that yes, there's yet another writer that has the same name in Los Angeles. Um, and I mentioned to you that, yeah, I've gone through that with somebody else having my name. And, and I, I got to a place where I had to kind of just surrender to that because my legacy is my legacy but let's talk about that the, how 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 challenging that is isn't it yeah so um when i started writing 21 years ago um there was no internet we had flip phones like we had just got from pagers to like everyone having cell phones at that point um so when i when their like internet had gotten more popular, I had moved to Atlanta, which I had already been painting for so many years. I, I was 24 when I moved to Atlanta 
And um, so that's Molly Devlin, and she lives in Sacramento. She actually painted the background and that character. Yeah, she's part of your crew, few and far. No, but she's a good friend oh. of mine. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, she's just a very talented, uh, awesome woman. And I work with a lot with uh, street artists, women. Okay. Um, they're, they're actually a lot easier to work with than some women in graffiti. Some women that write graffiti are a little bit competitive. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, a lot of women that do street art are very kind and loving and uh, right. easy to work with. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's get back to this idea of the name, right? Because that that thing was that's so central to us, right? Our yeah. name, our legacy, and and um, I, I just wanted you to finish your thought on that. So, um, Flickr was becoming popular of how people uh, were communicating with graffiti and things like that. Um, so there was a woman that reached out to me, and she had told me that. I need to stop painting that name and that this is her name. And I explained to her like, well, I don't know who the fuck you are, but I've been painting this name. And um, over the years, we never got along. We never communicated really um, until I ran into her in St. Louis. She ended up being mad cool. We talked about everything. Um, this chick not only is a badass tattoo artist, she also, and this is Mimi uh, Street Product. So if you get a chance, check her out. Um, I think her Instagram street product. She's a badass tattoo artist. She is a bomber. Like this chick has been putting in work for years. And I don't feel competitive with her. I don't feel any type of way. I'm mad proud for her because she's accomplished so much. And um, I love seeing women kill it like that. I don't care if she happens to write my same name. The other incident with... Uh, the other Mimi, the situation that we were in, where that thing happened, where you guys interviewed her, I feel bad that my followers maybe picked on her and that was my own fault, which I apologize for because I'm not trying to like bring another woman down by any means that wasn't, I think I was just feeling very hurt by the fact that this person is somewhat emulating my old style and then painting a name of two women that have accomplished so much already in the world. And um, I just kind of felt like she should be her own entity and her own name. So painting women like me and the other Mimi that have done so much work for so many years, it's kind of like be your own, be your own thing. And so I think that's, where I want to talk about, um, where I apologize to anyone that may have misconstrued the situation. Yeah, I, but it's also too, it's very important that um, that's stated, right? And that we show as a community by example, right? Right. Um, uh, who we are and what, what our stories are, what our legacies are. So there's no misconstruing who's who. And yes, there, there'll always be kind of confusion with, with, with names. But as we're witnessing in, through this presentation and this talk, you have this long lasting legacy of, of painting murals and freight um, that uh, I, I think you are, are, you know, really regarded by your community for, for all this work. Um, and uh, rightfully so, your name matters. Um, and, and that's important. I've put my heart and soul into this, so. You have another name that yeah. matters. Can we talk about that? So uh, my cousin had overdosed uh, two years ago and um, I decided to write her name. So I also write this, Thea. So it, it, it's, it symbolizes the memory but it's also it's kind of a break from your uh, your 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 Mimi tag, isn't it? Gives you an yeah. option, but also an option for style writing too. Right. So I want to I want to dig into this part of your life because I find that this is really important. Um, uh, getting to organized women. 
uh, the Few and Far Collective. Um, what year did you decide that you were going to commit to it? And uh, tell me a bit about tell me a bit about it. Let's let's find out more about it. Um, so I accidentally started um, Few and Far Women in 2011. Um, so this was actually a group effort. Uh, I had um, a girl, uh, Kesara, had helped me get some women together. Um, she also had came up with the name Few and Far Between. And then I decided I wanted to make it shorter and I, I decided to make it Few and Far. Um, and so this was just a wall that I wanted to just bring people together. I was like, man, it'd be really fun if we uh, had a mural with women to paint. Um, so then I ended up finding like two really big locations in Oakland and I just got permission for them. And then um, with the help of uh, Rhyme MSK, I was able to uh, get a paint sponsor. And then we got the wall sponsored and um, just threw a jam. And with that, it turned into, it snowballed. I ended up putting on a skateboard event, um, called it a few and far skateboard event with just women of all ages where every woman won a prize. So like it was a contest where every woman won and there was, it was such a huge turnout. It was insane. There was a 65 year old woman, even a three year old girl, like, so it just, it snowballed into what it is today. And now we are turning it into a nonprofit. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, so as a collective, and how do you govern, how is that governed? How do you govern a, a whole bunch of people together? So I actually have a lot of help from Ursula Young, which is um, a street artist that only uses paintbrush. And she, I wouldn't, Few and far wouldn't be where it's at today without her. Um, she's very professional. She helps me. Um, I'm kind of like the bad girl and she's the good girl type. You know what I mean? Like um, she helps me handle things in a, in a very professional manner. Otherwise I would just, uh, <laughs> I, we don't want to talk about what I would be doing. <laughs> um, I definitely, um, do help with connecting the dots and getting sponsors and things like that because I have um, done so much on the streets and things like that that I have this kind of like street clout and then she has a very good way of organizing so together we've created few and far into a, a really badass team I also have board members um, so we have eight or seven board members that are the original girls who help me make decisions. So once I kind of come up with something, we all collectively vote on it. And then we move forward with either adding people into the crew or just matters that need even, um, like we've all been discussing, you know, the Black Lives Matter, what we need to do, what we need to, um, help in the community, what we need to do in our own communities, and kind of just showing that attribute to what we're trying to do collectively. And so in terms of the artists that collaborate with you over the years, uh, is, is there a criteria they have to meet in terms of their talent or their, how, how, does, how do you choose? Well, um, first off, we know who's been supporting us. If people reach out to us, they show up to our events, they want to help because you want to be allies with people that want to be your friend from the beginning without being, you know what I mean? Like trying to ride your coattails because there has been women in the past that just either they want something we have or there are connects or something or things like that. Um, I think really it's about if you can also if some women can't work with other women. So we need somebody that is good with working other, with other women, understands what we go through. Like we all lift our own equipment. We all lift our own weight. Like we all contribute. Everyone pays to help keep the website going. You know what I mean? So if you're not on that team level, 
then you're not meant to be on our team and maybe you can be on your own. You know what I mean? So it's, it takes years for a girl to actually be uh, put into our crew just from past experiences. We just want to make sure that it's like a band. It's like, you can't just have a band that people don't work together. Yeah, exactly. So now in, in terms of the collective experience um, as, as women, the again, given the challenges and and the experience, unique experience of women, you know, in the world, uh, there's, you know, the the does the painting address that? Does the, the do the objectives address some of that, or is it just, you know, that you go out and you just do these beautiful murals? I mean, it's the action. It's like when you're painting in these neighborhoods. I think that all of these young people, all of these men, all of these other women, children, everybody's actually seen women working together. So that by far is more powerful than you seen videos or you seen photos. It's the actual like us people experiencing us on the street or experiencing us working as a collective for nine years. Like that shows what we are about and not and it, I noticed like some women will be like, if they don't get along with me, they'll be like, oh, well, she's not inspiring women, other women, or she's not trying to lift up every woman. And it's like, I am for women empowerment, but it's not my duty to lift up every single woman in the world. Right. I'm, I'm trying, but it's not my job. So if you don't feel that I'm doing that, then you need to start a crew that lifts up every fucking woman in the world because I'm trying and I've like, put other people's art and at the girls before my own. So I think that's where I've lacked in my own graffiti because I've cared more about my crew than my own self. Well, you're a leader. And so, but again, the, the, the thing that I find really interesting is that um, as a crew, you don't politicize your art, so to speak, you know, or, or, or you know, I mean, I haven't seen everything. Uh, it, it's a crew that's really focused on doing graph and beautiful art and 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 am i wrong in that so what do you what do you mean like well you know sometimes you know uh, someone will, will go paint a message right you know a woman's right message or a politicized message so to speak right uh with and and what you're saying makes sense about just the act of painting as a crew like this is a political statement right rather than a, and a rather overt statement about a woman's issue well it just <laughs> depends because we have painted murals uh like we painted a mural um in oakland that says you are beautiful and it was women of all creeds sizes shapes all these different things so we really wanted to highlight what women go through with um, social media, how a lot of things make us feel bad about the way we look or our size or things like that. So, I mean, we have painted murals that do reflect that type of thing where it's like, you know, we see these images and these ideas and we're just flooded with this false sense of beauty that it really affects all of us on a deep level. It doesn't matter what kind of, if you're a trans woman, if you're a man, like, all of these false senses of um, beautification really messes with a lot of us. And we see these perfect people on Instagram or the internet, and it's just not true. So we have painted murals that reflect that, but really the power is in the action and less in the spokenness. Right. Uh, this project, you and Nico uh, are in India. And, and Didi. And where? Deity. Deity. So, Nico's to the left, Deity yep. is in the middle. I would yep. say it's Deity. And uh -huh. then I'm to the right. Uh, tell me about this project. So we went to India to paint uh, at the Technology Institute of India. And um, we were invited there for a festival. And um, we just painted all over wherever we could but some locals had brought us um we had gotten an airbnb right by there and some locals had painted with us and um Didi had chosen kali 
I don't know why you can ask her. It's I love Indian culture. So um, yeah, we just kind of went from there. And Nico actually, she does graffiti, but she's really good at doing um, lettering as well. So I think she's exploring that. So she's like, I'm going to do letters. And she did them so fast and clean. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, she put who was there. Um, but yeah, it's, it was just kind of like a fun wall. I actually was wearing a sari. So I was wearing like traditional Indian clothing and um, painting and yeah, it was fun. So, so what was the reception to, to all of this, uh, to seeing all these women spray painting? They loved it. Um, because women don't usually have the same rights as women in America. Um, they're not as outspoken or they're not embraced in a way that women can be outspoken. And there was all these little girls there that were just eating it up. And it, it was really fun because they got to try painting and um, just hanging out with us and, you know, touching our, uh, having tattoos and them touching our arms like, wow, like, you know, not, I don't think they've ever seen women like us. And a lot of teenagers were watching us and, I mean, the whole, the whole like town stopped to hang out with us. It was really cool. I, I would imagine that happens with a lot of your projects to see, yeah. to yeah. see a whole crew of women just going not on a wall and right. It, yeah. It is, it is a site. That's for sure. Yeah. I had mentioned to you that there's, you know, well, first of all, before I get to my point, I want you to talk about this mural in Richmond. Uh, about the uh, the railroad, the collapsed railroad, if you can. Okay, so I don't know all in, mm, it's so bad. I don't know all the information. As much as you can. Okay, so uh, Ed Trask, he's a local mural artist. He actually put on um, Richmond uh, Street Art Festival here in Richmond. And um, who painted here was Hops, Reds, me, Ursula, and uh, Jen Ponzi. Um, a few of those girls are no longer in few and far. Um, they're kind of doing their own thing. But um, we decided, we had heard that there was a collapsed railroad and um, only the white people were rescued out and they actually left the black people to die where the railroad had caved in. So we're just like, what the fuck? That is terrible. So we decided that we wanted, you know, to, to not only show a strong black woman, but we wanted to pay tribute to what these people had gone through and showing a black woman holding up the train because she represents, we will never let that happen to people of color, like within our our group or whatever we do like she represents the strength in all of us holding up that train because that was just a terrible situation you know and their bodies are still um underground trapped is it memorialized in any, any other way yes it is well thank you for sharing that and this photo uh which i was uh, alluding to earlier uh, it moved me and that in all my years in this culture uh, and being around artists, mostly male, uh, <laughs> to see all of you, over a dozen painters uh, painting, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful photograph. Where was this event? What, what, what were you guys working on? So that was the largest female event. Um, I, we've actually done the largest in Miami during Art Basel. Mm -hmm. um, so this was during Art Basel on the main, um, it's so different now, but in Wynwood um, on the main strip. I think it's, is that the Wall of Fame? Is that? I, I don't, I, I don't know this wall. It's the it's one of the main walls. Yeah. I think MSG usually has productions there. Um, yeah. Quake, MSG. Man, and you guys, you guys are lighting it up. So listen, Mimi, in in the last five minutes, um, I I want to encourage our 
our uh, visitors to ask you a question. Uh, somebody asks, where are you from? Uh, she might say, it's none of your business. <laughs> I'm from Northern California, a really small town in the woods. There you go. Uh, any other questions for Mimi before we uh, sign out? Oh, and FDC crew, sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. FDC uh, represents which crew is that? So that's what Tragic Grab and a few other amazing artists, t super talented. They're a Miami crew. So that's also their wall as well. All Natural 77 asks, how do you keep an art collective continue? How do you keep an art collective and continue to thrive and produce a strong unit? Um. I just tell them fuck around and find out. No, <laughs> uh, no. Um, I just I just try to keep everything uh, communicative. Yeah, what's what's the one goal that you have for twenty twenty? Um, we're actually producing a book, um, so trying to get that close to finished. Um, also, I'm I was trying to do the largest female graffiti crew in America. So that our female graffiti event in America, which I am street artist. So right now I lost a few sponsors. So if anyone wants to sponsor our event, it's happening in October in Richmond. Um, that's a huge goal of mine. So that's happening. Hopefully we can have women fly out from all over the world to be a part of that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my goals for this year. Favorite color? All of them, but I like gold and turquoise. <laughs> um, are you, uh, hi, 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 name asks, planning on painting in Miami soon? Uh, no. <laughs> and sorry if I miss any Miami people. I actually, there's a lot of people I love out there, so. Right, you, you definitely have crew here. Um, let's see, another question. Uh, OG Drew one. How did you feel about the two other Mimi girls graffiti? She's already answered that. Um, interesting. Ken Myrtle asks, street art and writers, can we be friends? Yes. Most of most of the girls in my crew are um, street artists. You know, it's I I I get I get uh, asked about that. Um, and one of the things that I, I tend to tell people is like, you know, writers were, you know, the original street artists, you know, and, and, and it's interesting because writers can, especially style writers, they're very interesting because they, they have, um, they're kind of, kind of creatively ambidextrous. They can do a street mural, but they can do a wild style burner. And that's not often the case with somebody who does murals. They don't understand the legacy of wild style lettering or lettering in that way. Uh, let's see if we have another question for you. Um, I also, one of the images, uh, his name is Nail, Niels, Nail, N-I-L-S, sorry if I said your name wrong. He actually painted my portrait. Um, mm -hmm. He used all paintbrush. And it was actually really honoring to have a male paint me. I was really surprised. Um, you know, the fact that he sees what I've done and who I am. And I was quite honored by that. That's cool. You have, oh, I got 30 seconds. So in okay. my final 30 seconds, uh, on behalf of the Museum of Graffiti staff, we want to thank you so much for spending the hour with us sharing your story, your amazing journey, your crew, you. your go few and far collective. Big up to all of you who came out to support her today. Thank you.